I totally forgot to film an intro for this video. So the footage is me not saying what I'm saying now. I've voiced over it. But basically, this is a video of me in the shed um, sowing some seeds and chatting with you about um, things that I've grown and liked and not liked, um, trouble I've been having with compost, what compost I'm using. Um, and basically, it's quite a laid back video, uh, me in the shed chatting away. If you make the whole video well done, because it's quite a long one, I've had to split it because I have also gone on to film um, looking at some of the dried flowers and things I have, which I'll put in another video after this one. So good luck. I hope you make it. Um, if you do, comment. I'd love to see who does and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. I only sowed these seeds on the 10th of September, which was Sunday. I think, and today's Thursday, so they're not even been in a week yet. Um, so anyway, I started, so that's an empty tray. That was sweet peas, watermelon. Uh, another empty tray of babascum, which I've not grown before. This is a trial. Another empty tray. Mm, I probably shouldn't be sowing that this time of year. That's echinops. But then we have got some germination here. In, interestingly, these are both Ganesha. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Again, I've not grown it before, so it's another trial. And I'm going to trial it in the tray in the autumn, in the tray in the spring, and in the ground in the autumn, and in the ground in the spring, because I've not grown it before. So I'm going to try it. But interestingly, these are two different colours and the white has not um, sprouted at all, but the mixed colors has come away nicely. So that might actually be the seed or potentially maybe one side of the tray was drying out more than the other. I've got my, this is my grandfather's old mister, it's a bit temperamental. And then we've got something else coming up here just coming up oh stocks and I wasn't going to autumn sow any stocks again because honestly my spring sown ones did so well I'm not really sure why I'm doing it but basically I like to cover myself for all eventualities so I tend to do a bit of seeds in the autumn a bit in the spring and a bit in the ground and then you sort of you're covered if the weather's bad or if animals eat things. I mean, last year voles ate so much of my stuff but luckily I don't all put all my eggs in one basket so although like all my ammy had been eaten that was in a cold frame I still had some in some pots in the greenhouse so I try yeah try and uh, cover all things that could go wrong uh, so that's that one and then I don't think anything very much has germinated in here Oh, something, a cornflower and more stocks. And then, what is that label even supposed to say? I'm presuming this is sweet rocket. It just says mixed rocket. And I haven't sown any rocket leaf vegetables, um, but that hasn't done anything. But it's a biennial really, so really that should have been done in June. Um, I didn't really use any rocket at all um, for my cut flower patch this year, so I'd sort of, I'm not really that worried about it. So I thought I'd chuck a few seeds in and if it germinates, it does, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. And then um, some of more of these stocks have started to, just started to germinate there. But yeah, it's only been a few days, so I'm sure these other things will come along. Uh, but I'm going to sow some more things now as well. And look, we've got all these things back here that got sown and then just left in trays. I can't even remember what these are, but they're annuals. So the fact that I didn't plant them out is a bit late now. This one's trying to put a flower on it. Poor little thing. Morning Glory. I can never remember what the um, long name is, but what a silly thing to do. Um, a friend gave me the seed and I sort of half-heartedly 
half-heartedly sewed them and that's what happened. Right, what are we gonna sew now then? I've had good compost and bad compost experiences and I always buy the same compost. I always buy, well, called Silver Grow. And originally that compost was really, really good because they'd obviously had it a period of time and it was really well rotted and it was really, really good stuff. More recently, and I will buy some newer compost from them to check what I'm saying is right, because it can sometimes be how long the garden centers have had it hanging around. So you can't necessarily blame Merle Court for the compost because it can depend on how the garden center has stored it. The stuff I've bought online from Mr. Fothergill's has always been excellent and i'm guessing that's because it's online they don't have it sitting around they're selling pallets and pallets of it it's all always been really good i, I bought some from an rhs garden and it, it wasn't great i was a bit disappointed by it but the bags did look like they could have been sat there a while this stuff i bought from a builder's merchant and i know because i asked i knew it had been sat there a really really long time but i wanted to try it because some of the new bags i've bought which are the the newer batch that merkel have started selling out i haven't found are retaining moisture as well so they're doing what a lot of the other peat free compost do which is just really really dry out and i use that for my biennials um this old stuff which probably is lacking in nutrients because it, they probably leached all out of the bag is holding moisture um, and it's a case of working out i suppose what's more important having nutrients or having moisture retention and for actually starting a seed the moisture retention is far more important and critical than the nutrition because once that seed has germinated you can feed you can feed it um, but keeping seed trays moist with these um, I've used a lot of the coir um, based ones in the past that just dry out so quickly it's very very hard to get your seeds to germinate they almost get a, a dry crust on the tray so anyway these these trays here have used this really old and by really old i mean this has been sat the builders merchant so it's at least 12 months old like probably 18 months old because they obviously bought a pallet of this compost and then because it was a builders merchant nobody bought it uh, anyway i'm giving it a go um some of the seeds there do seem to have germinated but i am going to really have to think about feeding anything especially because i'm really bad at my autumn sown stuff sitting in trays although i would like to get quite a lot of it into a low tunnel but anyway that's my compost situation at the moment because i have definitely been having a lot of hit and miss um with the compost as well the peat peat free is definitely definitely going to be tricky especially because now they're going to stop making the peat one and so then everybody and by everybody i mean all your you know gardener gardeners so not people who run nurseries or who are, are growing for business but everybody will need the peat free and it means because the peat free does take a while to break down it just means i think some of the composts that are going to be being sold may not be as good a quality because it's going to be hard to Fit, fill demand I think I think it's gonna be really hard for there to be enough peat free compost to run. I have tried to start upping my own compost game but for me that's fine on my beds but it's never going to be okay for me for growing seeds in because I don't hot compost and I don't have any intention of starting to hot compost and if you use vermiculture like I do which is cold composting with worms um then the weed seeds are not destroyed so if you put my homemade compost into a seed tray and then sowed your seeds onto it you would have no idea if what was coming up was a weed or what you're actually sowing 
Um, and that makes it difficult if you've got to wait for the, whatever seeding it is to get true leaves before you know if you've actually had success or not. So for the time being, I do need to be able to have a source of compost for my seed sowing. Um, sometimes if I'm feeling like it, I will sieve it. Um, I probably should have sieved it for my snapdragon seeds, but I didn't. I'm not going to sieve it today either, I'm being ultra lazy. But if you've got a sieve, yeah, do, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> if you've got a sieve, probably should sieve it. You definitely get better results, especially in the size trays I'm using. I've got some really small trays here. Um, so little tiny cells. Now, the reason I'm sowing some things in these little tiny cells is because I'm putting things in here that do not like root disturbance because these really the roots will really fill the, these little cells really well so then when you prick them out the roots all stay together neatly and you can put them into a new pot without disturbing the roots at all the bigger pot you start a seed in its, its roots are not so clumped together or compact and it will have roots all, you know all over the pot and as soon as you prick it out you have all these loose roots and that's fine for most things most things don't mind being pricked out as long as you don't disturb you know pull at the roots or but nigella won't like it if i so i'm going to start my nigella in these really small little cells and then they should be much easier to just scoop the whole lovely little plug root system out and put them into another pot uh, and this is a um mix i haven't grown before my favorite incidentally is Albion Black Pod, which I'm going to have to find from my dried flowers. There's some. I'm going to have to get some seed because I haven't bought any. But I've got loads of seed heads just back here of Albion Black Pod, which I can say. But this is one that, again, I saw on YouTube that, um, oh, who was, who was, uh, Cloudberry Flowers uh, grows this one, I think. I might be wrong. Uh, Miss Jekyll, and this has got a pink. I've never had a pink nigella before. I think this is blue, pink, and white. So uh, we'll give it a go. Um, and these seeds were the ones I bought from the Happy Green Shop. Um, and I hadn't bought seeds from them before, um, but I've had really good germination rates. They don't have a huge selection, um, but the seeds are very, very good value um, so I bought a few things from them and um, generally I get my seeds from um, Plants of Distinction, Chilton Seeds or um, Mr Fothergill's seeds I find very good as well actually um, but obviously if you're specifically looking for cut flowers it is easier to use Chilton's because they've got a really good filter system so you can, you know, because obviously they sell so many packets of seed, but you can filter, you know, for cut flowers and you can also filter for perennial cut flowers or biennial cut flowers. It's quite useful. All right. Uh, the only trouble, because these cells are small, you do just want to make sure you get enough compost in each of them. Um... I do a mix of cells and flats. Again, I do a little bit of every, I like to experiment with things and um, I'm not very good at writing things down. So I, sometimes I can't remember how I grew things the year before. I know I had some really good successes with some things in the airing cupboard last spring, but I'm not sure if I wrote it down. <laughs> right, let's make a label. So I just use a pencil. Uh, and then I use white spirit to clean my tags. So I do use plastic tags, but I use them, uh, you know, these are last year's tags that I'm using again. Um, I find they will go brittle if they're like left in the sun all the time. So when I finished using them, they're cleaned and they're put in my dark shed. I tr yeah, try not to leave them out in the sun. Um, I do find that they, these really vary in quality. So this is a, a really good quality plastic tag. And then the cheaper ones, the plastic, it just feels like this one, really flimsy and not such good quality. 
Um, so if you are going to buy plastic, it's the same with the plastic trays. Try and buy, I mean, my big flats are really strong, durable, reusable trays um, rather than the really flimsy plastic that's only going to last you a season. Right, anyway, let's write on this tag. I don't know what the date is today. I need to work that out, really, to write on my tag. I am going to do some direct sewing as well, but I just haven't got the bed ready yet. So, not quite there. 14th, I believe of September and mid-September is what I would always think would be a good time to start sowing your autumn hardy annual so if you've you know got a spare weekend this weekend coming will be a good good weekend to start doing that and really I should try and get some direct sowing done then as well so I, I need to um, pull my finger out and go and cut. Some, it's just that cutting stuff down that's still got flowers on it, isn't it? It feels awful. But I do need to go out there and just hack a whole load of stuff down and get the soil ready for... Um, I don't pull stuff up by the roots. Just chop it down and then sow the new seeds around it. I try not to put too many seeds in each cell. I'm going to probably put two in because then you've got room for error and then you can always just cut one off with some scissors pick the healthiest um pick the healthiest seed and cut off the one that isn't so healthy and then you'll have one per cell but it's a bit risky just putting one in initially because then you might end up with gaps in your tray where nothing's germinated And obviously we can't we can't keep using peat. We have to stop using it. But as someone who's always well not always but for twenty odd years been really keen in gardening, Carl, wasn't it easier to grow stuff than peat? Anyone could grow anything with peat. But it certainly um, shows who's got green fingers when well not even that because it really is down to the down to the growing medium a lot of the time and even the best gardener could um, have a really rubbish compost and not be able to grow anything I'm hoping this year I'm gonna not have too many problems um, this year I was okay the year before I had just a disaster with compost, absolute disaster. A bit like Sarah had this year. I, I had, I just, yeah, couldn't get things to germinate or if they did germinate, they just died off really quickly. Now I had a nightmare. So I, yeah, I empathize and wish, well, looking at the seedlings she showed um, on her YouTube channel recently. I think she's got it sus now. So I'm interested at in looking at the, she said it was expensive there and I was a bit tight. Um, she, she added a, a type of soil, I think she said it was, to her male pot silver grow. But it's definitely worth looking into. Oh, I've got too many seeds out. Oh, more Nigella. Uh, Midnight, which is one I grew this year because I grew that for my friend's wedding, and Delft Blue. And actually, I really like the um, seed heads of the Midnight as well. I don't know if I've got any in here. Yeah, I quite like the different shape. So that is the Midnight compared to what I usually would have as a Nigella. So that's what I would usually have. Um, that's of my Albion blackboard, and that's the midnight. But they're, you know, they're for drying for wreaths. They're very different. So um, that's why I'm going to give that a go again. Nice amount of seeds in there. But I think I'll sow those direct. Nigella is definitely better direct. Um, 
Right, these um, cells are slightly bigger, but again, they're small enough that I should still be able to get the roots out without disturbing them too much. I'm not using my greenhouse at the moment. Um, it's, we've still been getting some pretty high temperatures this week and I really just don't want, stuff's not going to germinate if the compost just is absolutely frazzled. So I'm just using the shed at the moment, it's probably just a little bit better. Um, the greenhouse is better over the winter because obviously it gives optimum light when there's not very much light. I don't usually grow under my grow lights until the spring. Um, but I just, the sun stuff I find is better if I get it started earlier. My annual flocks I find is much better if I can get that started much earlier. Uh, I've not been growing much in the way of uh, marigolds or calendula because they just self sow everywhere now. The only trouble with that is I end up with lots of hybrids and I don't necessarily get exactly what I want. So I am just gonna do a few snow princess. When I initially, so the orange flash, I really liked that. Coffee cream I found was a bit short and a bit weedy. Um, but this, this one, the Snow Princess, I've got loads of um, self-sown ones, but um, quite a few of them have sort of cross, been cross-pollinated and they're not quite the originals. I haven't got a huge amount here. I'm not gonna buy any more calendula seed because as I say, it it pops up all over the, and I could go and get, I could go and collect seed from the plants I've got. But the only um, problem is, is you, you just don't know, once you've got a mix out there, you don't know what you're gonna get. But I, I do tend to move them and let them grow because they're useful every now and then, but it's not a seed I'm gonna buy again. Although I, I do know, again, um, Bloom and Grey Flower Farm, Sarah mentioned Indian Prince, and a bit like me, that was one of the ones I grew initially was an Indian prince and it, oh, I think she's right I think you sort of get a bit nostalgic about things you've discounted in the past and then you're like oh but actually you look at a picture of it and you think you know that was quite nice so I, I see where she's coming from um, so that's snow princess um, and that you can either get with the snow princess a dark centre or a yellow centre and this year mine are all nearly the pale yellow centre which actually does work quite nicely in the sort of colour palettes I use. And that tray is just a, you know, a, a fruit tray. Um, I think it's probably blueberries. I do have a blueberry bush of my own, but for some reason I let the birds eat my own blueberries and then I have to go and buy them. This is one but if I didn't have the seed, I probably wouldn't grow again. It's on my, I'm not sure, I hardly used it. I used it for my friend's wedding and that was about it. I don't think I barely used it other than that. Um, the bees really like it. Uh, it's honeywort, um, Cerinthi. And if I didn't have the seed, I wouldn't, order any more seeds. I had grown it for my friend's wedding this year because she was having sort of purpley theme and I did use it a lot in the large arrangements in the milk churns and table things. So I've just got a, a, um, a nine tray here and I'm not going to be too worried on how successful this is or isn't um, but I'm terrible because I, I'm trying to sow less this year, which is clearly a lie when you look, but it's just, I've got all this old seed. I'm not ordering too much more. Oh look, how silly is that? I'm not gonna use this tray because I've only got three seeds. Ah, actually, do you know what? I've got a couple of seeds in the house from a stem that I cut and it sort of went seed in the house and I left them aside. I'll go and get them. 
There are some seeds that are really expensive, of which Sorinth is one of them. I lost the bits that I had in the house, so I just went out to the garden and just found a couple that had set seed, which I will now just show you. So that is a seed from the, oh, I'm terrible at this. Hang on, let me put it in the other round. That is a seed from the packet. Um, so can you see it's quite sort of pale looking and obviously it's very dry because, I mean, this is an old seed. Um, and then this is a new seed that I've just gone and collected, which is, you know, much richer black really really good seeds yeah forgive my amateur working out where the camera is my tablet by the way for those of you who are following my journey is still held together with sellotape um right okay so generally as a rule of thumb the bigger the seed the deeper i plant it so for the syrinth i am actually just make a little hole in my finger and put them in. Let's do an experiment if we remember. I'll put the tag in the row with my fresh seed. So we'll do that now. Oh! Right, so the tag is in with my nice fresh seed. Then we'll do the slightly older plants of distinction seed. Oh, and I'm still going to need two more of my fresh seed if I've got two more. There. Right, okay. So that's my tray of syrinth. I'm running out of space to put all my seeds now. Now, my experience is to be really, 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 really patient with your Olea, okay? I would prick out one and then wait three weeks and another one to germinate and I'd prick that one out and wait another three weeks. In. So they will germinate, but they don't necessarily all germinate together at the same time. Um, so don't lose faith in your Olea. Uh, I don't want a whole big tray like this of Olea, so I think I'm gonna put some Ami in the other half. Um, I'm always at two minds about whether or not to grow Ami. I don't put Ami in retail bouquets because I just find it sheds and people don't really like stuff that sheds all over the kitchen tables, but it's quite good for drying for use over the winter. And also if you do have any events and things, it's brilliant for events. And um, the Olea, however, I prefer Olea uh, for a couple of reasons. It will survive a frost if I plant it outside, whereas the Ami will not. Um, and I do, I can use it in my retail bouquet. So I tend to find the Orlea, that's a new packet. I wonder if I've, I hope I've got an open packet somewhere probably. So anyway, I tend to find the Orlea more useful. Um, the Orlea I'd be more upset if that one didn't germinate than the Ami. If the Ami didn't germinate, I, it's one I've considered Again, this is an older packet of seed. I'm not convinced I will buy it again. I really need to reduce my seed buying. I haven't done an order yet. This is all stuff I've ordered ages ago. I didn't find my spring sown Orlea were wonderful. Orlea is definitely one, I think, for autumn sowing and probably direct, really. So I will definitely plant most of this direct once i've prepared some beds so i'm just because these seeds are quite big i'm just spacing them out quite well i think i'm just going to do three rows of four because because they're slow to germinate if you've done that as well you've got a really good idea if it's worth keeping keep keep watering the tray and looking after the tray because you can keep track of how many you've pricked out so and then I am just going to cover 
my all layer. I don't cover the smaller seeds. Generally, if a seed's smaller, it needs light to germinate. If it's bigger, you put it deeper because it likes the dark. Like sweet peas, for example, dark. Sunflowers, dark. Um, and that works really well when you're thinking about what things you can sow in the airing cupboard as well. Um, so tiny seeds are not usually good. I mean, I, I'm no expert here. Please, I'm just going telling you what I found and my experiences is that the smaller seeds are not great for the kitchen towel in the airing cupboard. But there are some rules to exception um, because delphinium and larkspur seeds are not huge and they do exceptionally well in the airing cupboard, which um, I won't even think about autumn sowing my delphiniums and larkspurs into trays like this. I will put them in the airing cupboard. I, don't, I think I will autumn sow some, but they're just going to go in the airing cupboard because it's just so much they just your your germination rate is so much better um, if you've got an airing cupboard that's my recommendation i i did so well with my ami last year yeah got it all pricked out and growing on nicely in the low tunnel and then those little voles ate the lot ate the lot so the ami is a much smaller seed so i've just done a bit of a sprinkle for that one what else have we got? For someone who says they're reducing the amount of seeds they're sowing. I ordered some bulbs. Um, I can't remember the exact number, but I know that it was over 800. <laughs> Retail therapy is because, you know, we, we all start to uh, get a bit miserable, don't we, at this time of the year when the light starts to reduce. So I needed a bit of retail therapy. This is a good little company. Bishy Barnaby's Cottage Garden. That's a nice little company. Um, they sometimes have varieties that some of the bigger, you know, if some of the bigger companies are sold out, it is worth looking around. I didn't get on with my penny crest. It was the first time I grew it this year and I made a mistake, which I did show you on my video. I pinched it and I pinched it because we suddenly got that really hot dry spell and it basically, like lots of salads do, started to bolt. So it started to go to flower, but it was tiny. It was, you know, inches tall. So I thought with anything else, any flowers, I just chopped them down. And then generally that's good that you will chop them down, water them, and they'll come back bigger and better. But um, it was a mistake to pinch the penny press. I've always grown the Greek press before, so it was my first year growing the penny press. Um, honestly, the jewelry's still out on it, but I want to try it again without pinching it out. So I'm still giving it the benefit of the doubt. Um, but I'm still a huge fan particularly of autumn sown Greek cress. Um, I don't even quite see, I've got box fulls of it up here. I'm gonna go and get some, I'm not buying any more seeds of that because I've got loads of seeds in the shed of what I've grown and that overwintered through the frost, it, it did really well. And it, for the wedding I did, it was so useful. I really like it, but it is the type of thing, it's a bit like nigella. You really wanna sow a bit of it every three weeks probably just to keep keep a keep it so you've got it all season because i find nigella and the really useful things which if you don't remember to keep sowing them you really miss them um uh, mm, i'm really i'm not sure why i've even got this packet out to grow again because this stuff drives me mad have i got any in here It drives me mad because it just ends up like this. So the breezer, and this one is, ah, it's okay. It's not this. So the breezer maxima, which is this, drives me potty to harvest it. Absolutely potty, but it's okay. This is the one I really like. This is the perennial. This is breezer media, which um, I really, really like. 
and the, 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 it still has the same sort of style. I'm just looking to see if I've got a bit around. Same style um, seed heads, but much, much smaller. And I love it. So I much prefer the perennial. And I, I think my plan is just to have a much better crop. You know, I've only got, I think I've got three plants of the perennial and I, I would like it a few more. So yeah, so that's why I've got this one. Again, you have to grow these things. You have to try them to, to see what you like. Uh, and I love the perennial one, but I'm not so keen on the annual one. I mean, cornflowers are a bit of a pain to harvest, but cornflowers, sometimes you really need those colors that you can get cornflower at the times of years it will grow. Cornflowers will do really good early and really good late in the season if you've done another succession. And sometimes they just give you, particularly if you need blues, um, they're really, really useful. Cornflowers are one that I've always threatened to take off my um, growing list. But I think if you grow some nice colours, um, then yeah, keep growing them. I will direct so like I said, I'm going to direct so most of everything I've planted here, I'll direct so as well. Levatra, again, it's not my favourite thing, but there was a, ta a period of season this year where I really needed it because I didn't have anything else that offered me that slightly larger round flower. So early on in the season, I would have really struggled without the calendula and the levatra. So even though they're not my favorite things, if you're selling flowers, you do need to make sure you're covering your whole season. And although I, I mean, to be honest, I could cut that down in July and put, put some zinnias or even daily, because I, I just don't use it then, but I do, it's a bit like, um, some of my daisies. They're not my favourite thing at all. I don't really like them. I'm not talking about the oxide daisies, I'm talking about the larger Shasta daisies and things like that. They're not my favourite, but they fill a hole. Um, so I have two big perennial clumps and I need them. They're not my favourite, but I do need them. And that's how I feel for the batch. The salvia, it's just can give you again a pop of colour but I don't grow the mix because I find the white really difficult to harvest at the right time without it going brown so I, I'm just growing the, the, the blue again the blue blue denim I'm growing I've cut all mine down now I probably don't need half a tray of it but I'm thinking about if I've got some extra plants selling some plants but you do have to register online it looks like a really simple registration document just have to register it's to do with plant passports um, but it, it looks fairly straightforward so I'm thinking about doing that and then I can just sell any extra um, you know just for local people for their garden and like this salvia that would be a nice thing just to put in a, in a garden or even in a pot salvia the levatura ended up being not the colour I thought it was, but I've got the seed, so I'm going to sell it. I am, um, I, I, like I say, I, I can't spend loads of money on loads and loads of seed. This seed's a bit bigger, so I am pushing it in a bit. Should have labelled the salvia before I started putting the levatura in. Luckily, I could always look back at my filming to work out what I'm doing. My mum grew a really nice coloured levatra one year and that's what I thought I was growing. I think I looked more at the colour. This is called Silver Cup. And I thought Silver Cup would be the one my mum was growing, which was a beautiful, really pale white with a tiny like bit of pink veining. It was lovely. And I thought that's what I bought. But what I've got is actually a bit of a bright, garish pink it's not quite as bad as the mallow um which i'm not really sh they're so similar the mallow and the levatra 
Um, I don't know why you would grow both. And I've decided that perhaps the mallow, the white I quite like, but when I um, first started doing cut flowers, I was really into Sarah Raven. And I, I do still sort of really love her color combinations and I've got one of her books. And when I started, I bought her cutting collection of seeds and that was my first, I hadn't done any research on the seeds, I'd just gone ahead and I bought her and she gave you maps and guides of where to plant and I really in, enjoyed it. Um, but my taste has changed. And although that was something I really liked growing in the beginning, I definitely am starting to lean now more towards more muted and subtle colours, which is why I'm calling this pink garish. It probably isn't garish, but it's just my taste is changing. Uh, but I still look at the Sarah Raven book and I think her choice of colour combination is a night, but for some reason it's not what I like to create anymore. I think you do start to develop a style and your customers sort of then, ex oh, I haven't labelled that. Mm -mm. Your customers start to expect your style from you, if that makes sense. Um, I've run out of labels. I think we're nearly, nearly done now. We've just got Dorcas to do. Um, oh, and then I was going to do some wallflowers. Um, might just sow those straight outside. Um, interestingly, my wallflowers that I sowed in June last year, I was a bit disappointed not to have them in the spring, but they're just starting to flower now. Um, I think they're gonna, I don't know, be the wrong color though for autumn, that's the trouble. So I sowed them thinking I was gonna have them in the spring with daffodils was what I thought I was going to have them with so I went for a white so I'm not sure that now I'm getting into autumnal colours that white is going to be all that useful but anyway that's what we've got right so yeah this is the Bishop Bishop Bishy Barnaby's Cottage Garden seed um, so I've got Various Dorcas seed here. I mean, this is one I've just collected. I have no idea what colour that is. Um, that might be a good one for direct sowing. Oh, this one is empty, I believe. Oh, there's a few little bits in there. And then this one is... Yes, yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll just do half the tray. Do half the tray white and half the one, this one, which I believe is the mix. And then this stuff I've collected will do outside because I, I have no idea what color it will be. I've got loads of snapdragon seed to try and find a home for because I've decided I'm only gonna grow my Chantilly next year just because I didn't, I didn't cut it. Any of the stuff I grew this year, I didn't like it. I just really like the Chantilly. Yeah, so nice little envelopes, nice instructions. This is um, what I was just um, saying, Bishy Barnaby's Cottage Garden. And then nice little bag inside. And they just had a few things I've not been able to get hold of. So I specifically wanted the white Dorcas because as I've just said, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Amy. And I much prefer Dorcas to Amy as well as Orlea. So I thought if I had a white one, and I couldn't get the white one on the bigger seed companies, so I shopped around and found the white one here, which is what I want. And I grew some white this year, it's just starting to flower now, and I, I really like it. I mean, I just really like Dorcas. Um, and again, Dorcas is another one that will overwinter, like, just like Orlea. So there are a few things that I'm starting to get really keen now. Um, Nigella is one of them, Dorcas and Olea because they will they will take a frost. So you can be quite happy, and on the Greek crests. So those things you can be really happy that if you you sow them in autumn outside, 
I haven't got very hardly any of that. But um, that they're gonna grow. And let's be honest, we all wanna grow things that are easy to grow, don't we? Just a very light covering. So I now need to get some, if you can, I mean, if you haven't got proper propagator covers, I've got, I'm not sure if I've got an example in here. I've got old bits of um, perspex that used to be in the windows of my greenhouse before I finally bought glass for it. And I'll just, until they germinate, put something over. I mean, even like one of these that I've used to sew upside down, but it's just, if you can keep the moisture in, germination is so much better. So I'm now gonna try and find enough propagator lids to cover all of these. I have a household um, of a, f I, have a <laughs> I have a friend who has a household of, it's supposed to be um, six, but it's nearly always more than six. And she gives me these large trays that um, she gets. I think she, she buys like big chickens or something and um, they're quite handy to hold water. I've found covers, I will speak now and show you, but we're getting quite full up here on the windowsill here. These are some cuttings of, um, I've shown you the name before, I can't remember again, but it's a house plant anyway, um, that grows really easily from cuttings. Um, so they've actually rooted. I've got one spare lid if I fancy doing any more seed sowing, but the table is full because I've still got these are all things that either came to plant hospital. So these delphiniums, I've got three, had come to plant hospital. They're fine now, but I think I'm going to plant them out in the spring now. I don't think I'm going to plant them out in the autumn because they, they've been in here. They're really tender leaved. I think I'd rather cut them back, keep them indoors and plant them out in the spring. Um, and then I've got a few um, little lavenders. Again, I'm not going to plant them out now because if we're wet winter, they'll get waterlogged. And then I'll spin you around and show you what we just did. Okay, so those were the ones I did on the 10th there, and these are the ones we've done today, all with their covers on, um, which hopefully will germinate. Um, hopefully will germinate, yeah. <laughs>